Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Ice from Ice Multimedia, and uh, after a short little hiatus there, I'm back with another video Photoshop tutorial for you. Um, just before we get started, a couple things. Uh, despite the fact that Mr. Steve Jobs is looking on here, um, I'm going to be working on a Windows-based PC, so just keep that in mind for um, when I use a hotkey or a shortcut or what have you. Uh, but they're they're pretty easily translatable, so I shouldn't have too much problem with that. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is uh, sort of a faux HDR effect, an HDR sensor, high dynamic range image, which uh, usually requires a photographer to take um, multiple pictures of the same image using a tripod, um, sort of each each time focusing on um, a different portion of light in the image, whether it be shadows, mid-tone, highlight, etc., etc., and then you can kind of mess around with that um, in Lightroom, and Photoshop has a, a sort of a HDR editor now, um, which, I, which works pretty well. Um, Apple has an application for uh, the iPhone and whatnot that has a filter um, automatically uh, for it, and luckily, um, it's actually pretty easy to achieve, kind of, a, to, to fake it, and um, I know it's pretty popular amongst my clients right now asking me to make their images pop, um, <laughs> which I know is uh, relatively subjective, but um, if I turn around and hand them something like this, they're, they're usually pretty satisfied, so um, it's, it's good to have sort of something that's uh, quick and effective in your repertoire uh, in order to turn over your jobs quickly. So we're just going to get started, we're going to get right into it. Um, like I said, it doesn't take very long, so I'm going to open up Photoshop here. And um, I'm actually just going to go ahead, file open, control O, and um, go grab a stock image that I got um, of just like some fall foliage, nice fall background. I think I actually got this from uh, freefallfoliage.com or something to that effect. So, uh, some stock goes back up there. Um, so I'm sure that you can find something out there that, uh, that you can use. Now, um, I guess the reason that I chose this picture is because... Um, you're going to be able to see the the reason I chose this image basically is because um, it, it's not already uh, really really uh, high contrasted and really it's kind of a, it's a little blurry like the saturation could definitely be stepped up a little bit and uh, so could the clarity so um, but in addition to that you'll also get a good grasp for the effect that we're actually trying to achieve because there's a uh, there's a lot of highlights and shadows and there's a lot of different colors too so hopefully we can we can make this pop uh, pretty easily um, so if your background layer is locked like mine is which it probably is uh, just go ahead and just double click on that um, and we're effectively duplicating the layer you can also achieve that through uh, command J or control J um, or right clicking on it and duplicating it like I said before I don't understand why Photoshop um, locks that layer, but for whatever reason it does. Um, so go ahead and unlock that, and then um, right away we're going to create a uh, duplicate of this layer. So again, uh, you can control J, or like I said previous, you can right click and then just go ahead and duplicate layer. But I really suggest that you learn the, the keyboard shortcuts just because um, it's a lot, lot faster, especially when you get into jobs that require, you know, uh, 80, 100 layers, something like that. So. Um, we have our duplicated layer, and we're going to be working on that one right now. And um, just right off the bat, I'm just going to do a, a curves adjustment to it. And you can go to Image Adjustments, and you go down to Curves or Control M, uh, like I said. Um, sometimes I like to do this manually. Other times I just like to set the black point, um, which is you go down here right to this little eyedropper, and you can select that, and it says Sample in Image to Set Black Point. Um, you're just going to go to the darkest in, uh, portion of the image and you're just going to color drop right on that. So um, this is actually looking pretty much true black right there. And sometimes you get a, a, a crazy contrasted effect and sometimes you don't. Um, so in this instance where I'm not going to get much effect, I'm just going to go ahead and, and manually set the, the curves. So I'm just going to bring the shadows down just a little bit by adding a point right there. It's a little too much, and then we're just going to bring the highlights back up by adding another point, and bring the S curve to right about there. Now you don't want to go, don't go overboard with it. You know, less is more, um, but that's that's looking good right about there. 
So, okay, when you get something that, uh, that you like to work with there, and um, from there you're going to go to Filter, and um, this is where like just playing around in Photoshop really helps out, because you can, um, you'd never know that there was some of these filters here that you can actually use that are, uh, y you know, useful more <laughs> so than the, like the graphic pen, let's say, or like glowing edges, stuff like that. Um, so you come down to Other, and um, we're actually, we're going to use the High Pass filter on this one. So select that, and then automatically you're going to think you did you messed up and you did something wrong, but in actuality you, you didn't. This is exactly the effect that you want to achieve. Um, now, like I said uh, just prior, as far as the curves adjustment was concerned, less is more. Um, the same goes for this effect right here. Now, you, I guarantee you've seen people do it um, a million times before on the internet, it, every which way, and sometimes it just it looks really, really bad if it's just the, the whole focal point of the image um, is this effect. So it's really just used to, to bolster it and it shouldn't really like take away any of the attention. So um, obviously your, your pixel radius is going to differ depending on whichever stock image um, you chose, but um, you'll, you'll see what we're going for and you can just make a, um, a better idea for what you need um, later on. So I think even Alright, 13's looking good. And then we're just going to select OK. And from there, we are going to change our layer blend mode. And um, a few different ones of these work. You can actually try them out. Um, there's overlay, soft light, and hard light, I find, are the, the best um, for this, this effect. But uh, just basically, again, you just want to check it out, try it out yourself, and see what works. So this is the effect on overlay. And this is the effect on soft light, which... Um, I'm kind of liking a little bit more than overlay because it's not too, too dramatic. And then this is the really contrasted hard light, so maybe we can turn down the, um, the opacity on that just a little bit and get some nice, nice shadows and nice colors. And, you know, you can obviously check to see what that actual effect is doing um, just by toggling the layer visibility uh, on and off. So that's, that's looking still a little, a little harsh for my liking. Uh, let's go back to soft light and go up to 100%. Yeah, I like that. Um, so then, uh, again, just uh, from here, I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and I'm working in um, CS5 uh, extended right now. Um, adjustment layers, I believe, uh, came into uh, effect... Um, I mean, a, a long, long time ago, but as far as the actual, the quick menu for it right here is, uh, I think it was CS4, but um, here I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to mess around with um, the color saturation a little bit, and, um, and the vibrancy, even though the vibrance is looking looking pretty good, so just uh, hue saturation, and uh, again, you can play around with um, with a few different settings here just to, uh, just to see what looks good, I don't know if you've ever played with this drop down menu. Um, but you can just kind of scroll that and uh, and get an effect, and that's uh, we're increasing the saturation right there, uh, kind of decreasing it. That's looking a little like uh, a little retro, like it would be on your uh, your grandmother's camper's wall or something to that effect. Um, that's boosting all of the red tones, which again that's that's not bad, but it's a, a little much. And you know you can obviously toggle that down, um, but that's kind of nice and um, nice and warm right there. Good good fall colors, I think. Um, the saturation's really popping, and then again, like I said, um, we're, I'm just going to group these up just so you can see uh, the the end result. Um, but just from uh, a layer style and one uh, really really uh, quick filter, um, we go from that to that, which so th that's the initial, and um, that's the end result, which I think you can you can see is uh, is a lot better. Um, just in terms of clarity, and there's just there's just more depth to it. It looks a lot crispier. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty simple to pull off, and you can do that with a, a lot of different images. So um, use that to your advantage and uh, try it out on something. Uh, try it out on something today. Now, if um, I'm going to leave a link in the description to um, both my let me see if I can find it here, both my Facebook um, as well as uh, my Twitter. If you guys could go and uh, add me up follow me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me know what you want for future tutorials. And, uh, you know, if you just have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to email me at icemultimedia at gmail.com. Um, as well as if you have any projects, uh, be they're, uh, you know, print-based or web-based. Uh, I'm doing a lot of cool things with, uh, 
with Flash and Dreamweaver right now. So um, yeah, I don't know, get get at me if you're interested in doing some work. So thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon.